this next drawing now will be the high point for the head. So it's a drawing right after. And this is where I reverse the curve now on the neck. And then drag. But once again, it's less violent than the first two times. So I'll make this drawing here very close to that one, easing out of that position. stretch position here, bring the head down, so here now is where, because you're straight ahead animating, you've got to get your roll flip going so you can look at position of this head position of this head, position of this head, and then figure out where your next position is going to be. So if you track where those lines are, the various individual drawings, you've got one here, the next one is here, the next one is down <coughs> here, you can see that the distances are getting greater. So therefore my next distance would have to be probably somewhere around there for the center in order for that to progress properly. Okay, So it has to get bigger as it comes down or stay the same but it can't get smaller. Bring a little bit of a stretch right in there. And now into my bounce. Again, I need another in-between in there because with this bounce, what I might want to do on this one, just to lessen it a little bit, is I might want to put the bend in the head, neck here, but then do this type of a thing where it starts to cushion in the neck a little bit more so it doesn't flop over quite as much and do that instead. But again, this is all about analysis and just understanding what the principle is that you want to portray and how you want it to look. So once again, we take the whole thing, we flip it to see what the action looks like. Okay, so it's just a secondary ball bounce. It's just being delayed by a couple of times. And it's attached by the neck. It's got a, kind of a nice feel to it there. All right, so now we have to look at the attitude of the head and what angle the head is moving at based on the physics of what's going on. So everybody failed physics class, right? In high school, this is where physics starts to come into play. So I'm going to angle the, the snout. If he's got sort of like a beak on him, it's going to angle up like that. And this will again be a form of overlapping action where I'm just going to draw it as a line similar to what I would do with the tail. But I'll just attach it so that it's got like the form of the nose. So it's going to have this beak like nose sticking out like this. So as he comes down now and stretching into this position, I'm going to angle that beak so that it's trailing behind. So you can see the angle on it. See how the angle has changed? It's going like this as it comes down because it's being pulled. So again, it's as though I have another ball that's right here. If I was to volume this, there's just another ball that's right there that, again, is just being delayed slightly. So on this one here, let me get the head volume a little bit bigger. I'd do the same thing here where I drag that part up just a little bit higher like that. So it puts more pull on it. And now into my hit point here. This is where the head is still going down. So what I might want to do in this one is just to make a little modification to it so that I'm still dragging the nose. So between these two here, it's dragging, dragging, dragging. Here I've got it snapped down. I might want to put an in-between in there, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to modify this so that the head is on a little bit more of an angle this way and put the beak so that it's up here. and make that one overlap again one drawing later. So rather than putting the beak down in this one here, I'm going to delay it. So I've got overlapping, overlapping, overlapping action on this. And you can do that as much as you want. It's like a caterpillar. If you had a caterpillar crawling across the surface, you'd have several points that were high and several points that were low. So if 
Like if you just did a standard caterpillar, you'd have this, right? So you'd have this being your high point, these two parts here being your low point. And as the caterpillar crawls across, this part here would start to move up, and this part here would start to move over and down. This part here would ripple around. But if I had like a millipede type thing, I'd have to have this wave action that was going like this. Or if you were looking at a snake from above, it would squiggle back and forth. Okay, so your opposite key would be over here, where this would move over to here, and this would move over to here in the opposite direction. And it would look as if it was wiggling back and forth. It's just a wave action. It's the same as what we're going to be doing later on with the seaweed. Same thing that I'm doing with the tail and the neck. They're both the exact same principle. Now, why have I got drawing number 28 here? Because I grabbed the top one. So, 8, 9. So, now here's where I'm dragging the head. And it's going to obviously be pointing down. So I'm going to put the nose down like that. Continues to pull. So I might want to have the nose going almost straight down like that, dragging. Then it starts to recover. Again, it's very similar to what you do with the tail, the tip of the tail as it comes up to the high point here. I'm just doing it with the nose now. This is where I'm going to lose part of my drawing because it's going to go off field. As the head comes up, it would curl up this way and the ball would be somewhere up in there. This one would also be off screen, way up here. Same thing with this one. I'll have to tack on some paper onto this in order for it to read properly. So that would be up there, hanging. Again, field, sorry. Hanging up here. Now it starts to pull down. I'd almost get it going straight up and down in this drawing here. My strobe. My strobe for my beak. So I want to angle this one up like that and get these other ones to in between down to that position there. So I might have one that's in the middle here. So this part is strobing quite violently in there because on my next drawing, the head's pointed down here. get the drag taking place on this one. So I might want to angle the head just a little bit more here. And starting to recover up. Because once again, as each bounce gets less and less violent, you make the overlapping action less violent as well. Okay. 23 is the high point. 24 now the body's starting to come down. This part here is hovering. So I'm going to continue to move the nose up on this one. Is that the head is going up, the nose goes up. And this is the part here where it just slowly begins to come down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace back the nose point up here to make it hang. So again, I'm just going one drawing delaying after. And then 
get this part here to drag. So I'm doing the same thing now on the tip of the nose that I would do with the head. Remember we figured out the positioning of the, the head here? So I'm looking at the position of the nose in these drawings here, tracking where that path of action is and finding the distance on each of them, making sure that each one subsequently gets slightly larger. Take a look at that flip. So it creates a really nice wave action throughout the whole thing. Okay, so now just so you're aware, have I ever done this before? No. I've never done something like this before. This is the very first time I've done this type of a character doing this type of an action ever. Okay. 30 years I've been animating, I've never done this before. How do I know how to do it? Because I'm adhering to the basic principles of what overlapping action is. And I'm just thinking through, what do I want my character to do? This is what animation is going to be to you for the rest of your lives. Every single last time you sit down to your desk to animate something, it's going to be something new. You will never have done it before. The principles will all remain the same throughout the whole thing, but the actions that you choose your character to do will be completely different. Okay? Yeah, you may do a walk cycle or a run cycle or something like that and do several of them, but each one's going to be slightly different or ma majorly different. You might have a character that has to run and they're very happy. And so they're going to have a certain body attitude. And then the next time you do a run cycle, your character might be scared. And so that run cycle is not going to be the same as the run cycle you had when your character was happy. It's going to be a different type of a run cycle. Right? Everything you do is going to be brand new, never done before. Right? Be aware of that. So, am I scared when I'm doing this? Yeah, I'll be honest. When I'm sitting here in front of all you guys and I'm doing this demo, you don't think I'm scared? Oh, yeah. Okay, I have a certain amount of confidence based on my experience and based on the fact that I understand what the principles are. And the key thing here is that I see it in my head before I draw it. All right? Even as I described to you, like I thought as I was driving into work today, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I've got to do this double ball bounce in the descending energy assignment. What am I going to do? And as I'm driving in, I'm thinking, well, I could do a cat. No, I've done the cat before. I can do uh, this. I can do that. Oh, I'll do the dragon. I'll do a dragon this time. So that's when I thought about it as I'm driving in today. Okay, so I didn't give it a huge amount of thought, but then as I sat down and I actually said, I'm doing a dragon with you guys, I had to do the dragon. So now my mind is racing, and as I'm talking to you and describing it to you, I'm playing it through my mind. I'm thinking, what do I want this to do? So then I sit down. I do the body first, so I just go at it in stages. And as I'm doing it, I'm flipping to see whether or not it's doing what I you know, want it to do. If it doesn't do what I want it, want it to do, I, f I fix it and change it. Right? But I understand what the principles are, and I understand what the action is that I want. I knew before I started drawing the beak that that's what I wanted the beak to do. As he bounced, I wanted it to delay. So as I'm drawing, I'm thinking of the principle, and this is what happens here. This has to happen. That's all you're doing. Okay? So... From that statement, I want you to understand that, yeah, there's going to be that scared component to it, okay? It's the scared component that I hope I don't screw up and these guys find out that I'm actually not really an animator, <laughs> which I am, okay? <laughs> but I, I don't want to make a fool out of myself, right? So there's that fear of screwing up and, and having everybody go, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just making this up as he goes along. And to a certain extent, I am. <laughs> I just made up this piece of animation right now, but based on the principles. So that's why we're just going to keep hammering in the principles, principle, 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 all the way, all right, over and over and over again until you guys get it, and then you start applying it, all right. So I think I'm going to I'm going to stop at that because I've done like three variations on it 
on the same one with the ball, the body, the head, and actually four with the nose to give you the sense of how it's overlapping, right? So what I want you to do now with your own piece of animation is decide where is the second ball going to be. You can put it in front if you want. So as the ball comes down, you could have the little ball leading that one, and how would that react? Or you could have it trailing in behind. Or you could have two balls, one on either side if you wanted to. So it does sort of a, a boing like this. Okay, and there's examples on the website that you can take a look at for the double ball where I've, I've put in various different things that I've done previously, like the cat bouncing back and forth. I've got a worm on there, a caterpillar type thing, and a few other ones that are in there. There's the, the rabbit bounce uh, where the rabbit's jumping up and down. Um, so pick one that you want to do. Okay? Add a second ball and add a tail. Okay, the tail obviously has to be trailing. It can be trailing the second ball that you're going to add on to if you want to but I'll leave it completely up to you. All right? Okay.